She gave birth to the baby a mere four hours later, an extremely quick delivery for a first-time mother. For Rita, it was more an expulsion than a birth. She was too far along in her labor process to be able to get an epidural, and the pain exploded in waves of fiercely sharpened little knives that burst from within her womb to her every nerve ending, piercing each inch of her until she screamed in agony, willing him to come out to leave her forever. She heard him cry, but the sound came from very far away, as if she and her son were in different rooms. Here he is, one of the nurses crooned, bringing up to her a swaddled bundle with black, black hair that shot straight out in, like spikes. She leaned forward to place the baby in Rita's arms, but Rita shook her head emphatically. She looked curiously at the tiny figure in the nurse's arms. He was so very small, she thought, and yet he had heard her so much coming out of her, ripping her apart, it felt. He looked wrinkled and winced and wizened and red as if he'd been scalded in a pot of hot water. She couldn't tell if he was beautiful or ugly or if he looked like her or like him. All she could really discern was the hair standing up in all directions the way Sebastian's used to do. Sebastian is her brother, her little brother. You don't want to hold him, the nurse asked, puzzled. No, said Rita, turning her head away to stare out the window, even though there was little to see now as the evening shadows slowly enveloped the cold skies. No one spoke for several moments, and the nurse glanced hopelessly at the attending doctor, who merely shook her head as she washed her hands. Okay, said the nurse, looking in dismay at the tiny mewing figure in her arms, and at the young and pervious teenager who had mothered him. Well, baby Ortiz, she said, consulting Rita's chart. Baby Ortiz, let's go find you a crib. No, not baby Ortiz, said Rita suddenly, before the nurse could step out of the room. He has a name, she said her voice firm even as she kept her gaze deliberately averted. His name is Sebastian. Sebastian, that's a beautiful name, said the nurse in relief. It means revered, she added, looking around at the momentarily silenced room. Even the doctor had stopped what she was doing, her wet hands suspended in the air, the paper towels next to her forgotten. It's an auspicious name, insisted the nurse, unfazed, thinking someone needed to speak up for this poor little creature, for both little creatures, the son and this sorry girl whose accusing eyes seemed to damn the entire world for her predicament. Rita closed her eyes and willed herself to concentrate on the pain still coming in waves, to keep from screaming out, until finally she was alone. She lay in the dark, relishing this rare moment of solitude, running her fingers lightly over the clean, crisp bed sheets. She wondered where Lucas was right now. Lucas is the father. If he ever thought of her at all anymore. She wondered where he spent his nights, tried to imagine what her life would have been like had she gone with him. At the orphanage, they all slept in cots in the same military barrack style room. Here it was just her, in this big, clean, firm bed with fluffy pillows and water and eyes set beside her. She even had her own television set for the first time in her life, but right now she just wanted the tranquility of, of, close, of total silence. Rita closed her eyes. She touched her stomach and felt it swollen but clearly deflated, empty. All this, she thought, and now it's over, just like that. And she had nothing to show for it, only a stockpile of lost avenues. As if on cue, she heard the door open again, and this time she turned to see the assistant from the home walk in with a sheaf of papers. Congratulations, Rita, the woman said cheerfully, turning on the lights without asking and pulling up a chair so she was close to the bed. I saw the baby, he's beautiful. You're a very, very brave young lady, and you're going to make this baby and his new family very, very happy. The good Lord will reward you for this. The baby is raised, you know, it's an orphanage run by nuns, which is how they used to do it. Rita nodded. She was exhausted. She didn't want to think about anything right now. I'm Mercedes, and I need you to sign this paperwork. Also, this is a time to write a letter for your son so he can take it with him to his new life, along with anything else you'd like him to have. I brought some writing paper here and a pen, and I can just leave you alone for a few moments so you can write. A letter, asked Rita, puzzled. Yes, a letter, Mercedes repeated patiently. Remember, we spoke about this at the home. You can write a letter for your baby. Why, demanded Rita. He'll have his own family. And he'll always wonder about you, Mercedes counter, placing her hand gently on Rita's arm. Quite frankly, I have no idea if his adopted family will want him to know anything at all. This is a close adoption. They can choose to show him things from his past, or they can choose not to. But we must prepare for the possibility that they may want to give their child a message from you. 
Without asking, the woman pushed the side button on Rita's bed until Rita sat upright, and then she moved the tray table in front of her. Here is a pen and paper. I'll leave you alone for a few minutes, Mercedes said and got up and opened the door. But what should I write, asked Rita, her voice rising in panic. Write something beautiful, Mercedes said. Write something loving, even if you don't mean it this very moment. I assure you, you will mean it one day, and you'll be thankful that you did this. Mercedes shut the door, and Rita looked blankly at the white sheet of paper before her. Once upon a time, she thought, I wrote beautiful things and expressive sentences. I told wonderful stories, and I got good grades. Now she thought of helpless little Sebastian with his spiky hair lying alone in some crib. He was finally rid of her, and she was finally rid of him.